I don't know if this is the right decision or not to pick up a free Zoa rock that is covered in pests, but we'll see. What is up, coral people? My name is Remy. If you're new here, this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. If you're like me and would rescue coral from impending doom, even if it had Aptasia and pests all over it, go ahead and click like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you are notified whenever I make poor decisions and upload more content just like this. Let's get back to the car. Look at this lighting, man. Okay, this is why it pays to be a part of your local coral groups or your reefing groups on Facebook because I just saw a picture post and it is of a Zoa rock that has utter chaos, some Rastas on it and maybe some unknown stuff, but it comes with the caveat, yes, it is free, but it is covered in Aptasia. I don't know why I'm picking this up right now. I figured I've got a decent cleanup crew and my peppermint shrimp love to feast on Aptasia and it's been a while since they've had any. So I figure I'll just throw this in my sump. They've been in kind of lukewarm water for quite a while and he doesn't have anything for me to transport in. I'm coming from work. So I brought a couple water bottles and we'll see what happens when we get there. I have this bottle and I have this shaker cup, which I guess I will never be able to uh, drink protein from again. So let's go check this out and see what these zoas look like. Nothing like doing a little coral dealing out on the street tonight. <laughs> We're trying to figure out a way to uh, house it. All right, so we're back here. We've got the piece of coral or corals in the uh, dipping container. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glove up and I'm going to uh, get protected here because I don't know anything about this at all. All I do know is that there's Aptasia all over it and that makes me nervous. So when I saw this on Facebook, I was like, well, I know the fate of this if I don't take it or if someone doesn't take it, which, you know, not a, not a very good uh, promotional piece when you're like, well, I got this coral here, but it's got Aptasia literally all over it. What the funniest thing about this is, one of the Aptasia already moved off. I don't know if you can see that down here in this corner. It's just hanging out in the tub. Now, I haven't put any dip in this yet. I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, Coral Revive, and I know this isn't necessarily going to do anything to the Aptasia, but it will get rid of a lot of the critters that are uh, seeming to be on here. Whenever you get a coral that you don't know much about, visually inspecting is a good thing. There's some white things right here. I don't know what these are. These might just be part of the rock. Um, but you wanna kind of look for any kind of flatworms or anything like that. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, just to get the, the dip started, I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, a heavy amount of the revive in here and just see what ends up coming off. Now this is a little bit more than what I would usually put in here, but it's zoanthids, they're pretty tough. Swish this around. Now this pipette that I'm using is specifically for this. So I have not used this or anything else. Honestly, if you wanna get a whole bunch of pipettes, they're like super cheap on Amazon. I think I got like a hundred pipettes for like, I don't know, five bucks or something like that. There's a lot of chemistry supplies that you can use for the reaping hobby, which is good. You know what, before I go any further and before I start like pestering this even more, I'm gonna go ahead and put eye protection on just in case. And again, Sometimes I wear this. In this case, I'm, I'm not going to. We're gonna get right, right in here. I'm just gonna start blowing water in all the crevices of this thing. One of the bigger issues that happens with rock like this is the pests that live inside all of the pores. Now, the ones that you can see, like the Aptasia, visually, not terrible, but like if there's zoanthid spiders or nudibranchs in here, you know, you just gotta make sure that you've got the proper cleanup crew to deal with all of the stuff that could be on this rock. Now, was this a risk? Yes, this is definitely a risk. A lot of people wouldn't do this and a lot of people wouldn't put this into their display tank. Now, my frag tank is kind of my display tank a little bit. The lagoon tank, I would never put this into. Uh, it's, just, it's not equipped. I don't have peppermint shrimp. There's no like bergia in here. There's nothing to deal with any kind of pests. There's not even any fish in this tank yet. So. 
Uh, I definitely would not be doing that. Other than some detritus, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of like craziness. Um, we'll see. We'll let this we'll let this marinate for about 20 minutes or so, and then we'll come back to brushing it off with more stuff here. I'm interested to see kind of what the bottom looks like. You can tell they used dry rock to start their tank because this is totally white. And just initially, you can't see, there's a easy frag right here of some Zoas that we could just probably just cut off. But I'm gonna turn the cameras off and we're gonna wait about 20 minutes and I'm gonna keep the water circulating in here and then we'll go ahead, brush it off a little bit in between all the polyps and then we'll go ahead and put it in the tank and cross our fingers and hope that the peppermint shrimp are hungry. 20 minutes later. All right, let's get a close up view on this thing. So you can see in the corner here, we found three bristle worms so far, uh, spaghetti worm, and I have stuck the pipette into every crevice. I have brushed off as many services as I can. And I think I'm going to go ahead and transfer it to a new bowl and kind of see where we're at as far as debris goes and detritus and stuff like that. So are you as scared as I am to put this in the tank? Yeah. I'm a little nervous. I did move it to a new bowl and blew it off again. And there's still some detritus and some debris that has come off of it, but we're getting closer. I'm just gonna rinse it one more time and get all the revive off of it. And then uh, we'll go ahead and set it in the sump and let the peppermint shrimp go at it. All right, we're in the sump. And look who has joined us. This is one of two peppermint shrimp that I have in this sump. One of them is shy and the other one is obviously not. There he goes. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Wow. I think he's got a bristle worm. He just pulled that right off the rock. So already going to town on this, which is awesome. But uh, let's check in with this piece in a couple days and we'll see where we're at. Again, we've got Armor of the Gods, we've got Rastas, and I believe Utter Chaos. I have to say this is probably the riskiest thing that I've ever done in the hobby. There's a few things that played a factor in this, which one of them was, well, it's free, which is awesome. I remember Inappropriate Reefer Moki saying, sometimes free is the most expensive. So we'll see if that's the case here in about a month. But so far, so good. Both of the peppermint shrimp are all over this thing right now and they are going to town. And these are proven peppermint shrimp. I bought these to eradicate some aptasia in the tank and these guys just stayed in the sump the entire time. So they take care of the sump. There's a couple more peppermint shrimp in the display. They take care of the aptasia there, but I'm hoping they just find a bunch of things that uh, are unwanted in the tank and go ahead and consume those. But I really do have a lot of confidence in these shrimp and the cleanup crew in my sump. So hopefully we just got a really cool piece that's going to flourish and look awesome for free. I guess there was a little bit of hassle involved and then I had to clean the rock and rinse it a couple times and dip it and make sure that uh, all the detritus was off of it and all that kind of stuff. But it is amazing the amount of stuff that came off that rock. But I think in the hobby, we're so used to getting everything on frag plugs and there's not a whole lot of surface area on those. So you might get a flatworm every once in a while. You might get eggs, you might get a zoanthid spider, you might get zoanthid eating nudies, you know, things like that, but never the amount of stuff that has come off of this rock. And most rock actually, you know, you're breaking down a tank and all that detritus has built up and all those critters have made homes and all the little nooks and crannies of that rock and the frag plugs just don't have that. So we'll see what happens and uh, fingers crossed. Two days later. It's the moment we've all been waiting for or the moment you just skip to, to see the Zoas open and happy and Aptasia free. If you have peppermint shrimp in your tank and they're not consuming Aptasia, they may not be the 
proper peppermint shrimp. There's several species of peppermint shrimp and they can also easily be confused with the camelback shrimp. The best thing I can offer is maybe ask your local fish store if these are the proper peppermint shrimp for Aptasia. They're normally not gonna carry peppermint shrimp unless they are for Aptasia. However, it's nice to know that your peppermint shrimp that you're buying are proven Aptasia eaters. Both sets of peppermint shrimp that I got from my local fish store had proven that they ate Aptasia and the owner Steve had assured me of that and I put these in my tank and my Aptasia was gone within a week. Well, now that I've got all these extra zoanthids and I've already got all these strains in my frag tank, I'm wondering what I should do with this rock. And I'm gonna leave that decision to you. Should I trade with a local reef hobbyist and see what I can get for it and document that whole journey? Or should these be the first inhabitants in the office Porta Pico tank? Go ahead and comment your suggestion below. I am so ready for some life in that tank because it's just been sitting there cycling with nothing in it as I am topping it off by hand every morning and every night before I leave. Dear Santa, I would like an automatic top off system for Christmas. I can't wait to show you the Porta Pico tank because that update is coming soon and I owe you an update because so much has changed on that tank and I still don't have anything in it, but the equipment is ready to go minus the ATO and I'm ready to shoot another update video. Maybe we'll go ahead and put those Zoas in the tank depending on what you say in the comment section below. Oh yeah, and don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the bell notification so that you are notified whenever I upload new content. I cannot wait to have my voice back. It's kind of necessary when your day job is radio. Oh yeah, have you seen my Zoanthus girl? Mm -mm. They special.